Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to another time here at the book club. Uh, I missed the session last week. Um, Sunday. I wasn't. Yeah, I was. I was. I was ill this first. Um, but we're able to make this Sunday. So welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, thanks for joining me, Joseph. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, so we've been doing a sec. We've been doing a, a study or read through uh the book, The Good Life. Uh, that's what we've been doing since July, uh, first Sunday in July of last year, and I will presently in chapter seven. And the all of chapter seven is what I titled uh Valentine special. We've been talking about relationship with people, the person beside you, which could be your spouse, your significant other. A uh, different kind of relationship on the spectrum of relationship. I'm talking about what the factors that affect that and how we can thrive in our relationship. That's been our focus uh, in chapter seven. This is our fourth take on chapter seven. And today we'll be looking a bit at the word intimacy, do some talk about emotions. That's what we're going to focus on today. All right. Uh, so great to have you. Uh, great, great, great to put for me question addition to whatsoever we get to share. All uh, right. So again, it, it's as the book that we, we, we're getting to look at. It's the Good Life, uh, written by two authors, Robert uh, Waldinga and Max Schultz. You know, and it's a compilation of our eighty-five plus years study of what it takes, you know, to develop rightly, mature rightly as an adult, right? There's a section in in, in Harvard, you know, where they study uh, adults, adult development. So they've taken real life scenario of people's life over generations, right? They've done, they started doing this more than 85 years ago. So they've had, they've had first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, uh, gone through the study. You know, and and the com the, the what they were looking for is what what does it take to live a successful adult life? You know, success being measured in terms of uh longevity and quality of life. You know, uh, in terms of health, satisfaction. You know, and and being happy with yourself and all of that. You know, and what they found out is that what it takes to do that is relationships right it's, it's relationship is is having having the right relationship in a different sector of one's life and also having quality in those relationships so it's pretty much having quality relationship in a different phase facet of one's life you know and then we're looking at how to replicate that in our life so we're looking at relationship we looked at different things and limits that could limit our, our relationship. And we've been trying to help ourselves, you know, have quality relationship in our life. You know, so that's all we've been we've been looking at as we uh stay with the book, uh looking at different topics around that. Again, there's a full take on chapter seven, and chapter the title of chapter chapter seven is the person beside you, you know, which typically would be your spouse. Right, it could also be a significant other, you know, maybe you're not married, uh, or whatever. But it's it, it's talking about the close relationship in your life, you know. That's what we've been looking at, and uh, the quote will, will, that pretty much runs through, you know, this chapter, you know, has to do with vulnerability. You know, for a, <laughs> you can't have a relation, good relationship without being vulnerable. Vulnerability is a doorway through which you 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 show yourself or not to the world. If you are vulnerable, meaning that you're real, you're authentic, you know. For if you're not vulnerable, that means you're 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 wearing a mask. You're you're facing the world with a mask, you know. And 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 it's what you what you show to the world. That's what you're gonna get back, right? If you if you if you if you if you, if you give the world a mask, 
the, the world is going to give you a mass back. The world reflects to us what we what we give out to the world. You know, typically we use the word and say that is called attitude. The attitude with which I face life with is what life will reflect back to me. If, my, if the attitude I face life with is that life is difficult, that's what I'm going to get back. You know, if, if, if the attitude I face life is, is that there's love out there, that's what I'm going to get back. If the attitude I face world, the, the world with is that there's no love out there, that's what I'm going to get back. The universe, the world reflects to us the same attitude with which we'll face it with, right? So that's important. Uh, so let's go into the, the meat of what we want to share today. And pretty much it's starting with intimacy, right? The, the keystone of intimacy, you know, <laughs> it, it, of intimacy it is a feeling of knowing and being known, right? You, you, when you say you're intimate with a person, it means that you know the person, right? Beyond what every other person knows about the person. And in a sense that you cannot then know that person unless that person also knows you, right? That, that's, that's what we truly mean by intimacy. It's a two-way traffic, right? When I say I'm intimate with a person, it means that I've exposed myself enough to that person and that person has exposed him or herself enough to me. You know, in the scriptural powers, we will we'll use the word that we're both naked to ourselves and not ashamed. We're naked to ourselves and not ashamed. You know, we're into one another, right? That's the word intimacy in the generality of the word. Now, obviously, the word intimacy could also be limited to looking at it uh, from, um, we, it could be looked at it from, from, looking, from saying that, uh, you know, there's physical intimacy, yeah, the spiritual intimacy, there's, emotional, psychological intimacy. You could break it down in all of those other areas, you know, but the generality, what it means is that you 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 know and you are being known, right? You 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 see and you are being seen. You're heard, you, you hear and you are being heard, right? You feel that you are not alone. You're you are you are you are you are connected with someone. Right, those are different words that come with intimacy, you know. Uh, so the word intimacy comes from the Latin word, which means to intimate, <laughs> which it simply means to make known, to intimate, to make known, to intimate, to make known. Right. So uh, when we talk about intimacy in relationship, it's making known, making known, making known yourself. And the other person making that person known to you, right? When we talk about in terms of physical, sexual intimacy, it's simply seeing each other's nakedness, right? And getting it into each other, right? But, but the real word itself simply means to, to make known, to make visible, to remove the skill, remove the mask, and be available. The real person comes out, you know, into that relationship. You know, so that, that's pretty much what the word on its own uh, means, right? So when we talk about intimate knowledge of one another, it's a feature of romantic love, right? You can't truly really be romantically in love with someone that you are not, uh, it, it, you, you are not intimate with. And that doesn't have to be physical, right? Especially when you're still caught in and you're not married, you know, but to be romantically in love with someone means that you're, you're not wearing a mask with that person. You are being yourself. You are bringing yourself to the party and hoping that the other person is bringing him or herself also to the party, right? Because for you for you to feel intimate, it means that you have, you have a sense that you, are, you know the person. You cannot be romantically... Uh, connected with someone you don't know, right? Or, or you cannot be intimate with someone you don't know. You can be impactuated, but, but when it comes to the word romantic, there's a need for knowledge. Everything before you, you truly romantically in love, you know, is what we call infatuation. Infatuation. Romantic love in, in, it involves a bit of filial, not just eros. Right, infatuation is mere eros, 
right? For you to go romantic, you have you have gotten a bit of filio added to your eros and also a bit of agape, you know, for it to be something that you, you are moving forward with, right? So, uh, but but intimate knowledge, you know, pretty much, you know, is uh, it, 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 it's just getting to know and being known, right? And, and we all want it. It's the way we are made. It's the way we connect with one another. We want to, we want to be known. We want to be seen. And we want to be heard. We want to matter. <laughs> what you're looking for in, in intimacy is you want to matter. You want to matter to someone. Just that that other person wants to matter to you, right? That's what you get in intimacy. You are you, you won't be intimate with someone that you don't matter to, right? You know, so and it's something that that you know, we all crave for. We crave for someone, you know, to matter to, right? And 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 uh, so all fruitfulness. Uh, I.D. Baker puts it this way: says all fruitfulness flows for intimacy. Because in intimacy, you are bringing the whole of you to the table, right? When you're intimate with somebody, you are bringing the whole of you or mask to the table, right? And, and, and therefore, you can then, that, and that involves everything you have, your, your giftings, your, 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 your talent, you know, and, 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 and that's where fruitfulness flows from. Because that's where you, you're being, you're 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 productive in a place where, uh, you know, you you bring yourself on mast to the table. So when you have relationship where there's no intimacy, you know, they, there's no productivity because everyone is holding back or you're holding something back. And people could be married for years and they're not intimate. They're just having sex. Yes, they're having physical intimacy, but they're not intimate in the real sense of the word intimate because trust is lacking, right? Trust is lacking. For as long as you cannot be naked and not ashamed, you're not bringing the whole of you to the party. You're not bringing the whole of you to the table. And you're not then able to get the fullness of the benefit, benefit of relationship, right? You're not able to be as productive as you could be, right? Because in relationship, it's all about synergy, right? The beauty of relationship is producing synergy. And when we talk about synergy, we're talking about oh, the, 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 the resultant combination of the two being greater than the sum of the individual part, right? That's what we call synergy. We also use the word for it, the mastermind, you know, creation, you know? So uh, when, when a relationship is such that people come in on must, you know, with trust in and for one another, then they're able to then produce what we'll call that synergistic uh, result, that mastermind result. You know, a, a, in scriptures, the word will say, two will put to flight a thousand. Two will put to flight a thousand. Two will have the power of a thousand. But I mean, no, that's not, I'm saying it the reverse. One will put to flight a thousand. One will have the power of a thousand, and two will put to flight ten thousand. You see, the sum of those two is two thousand. But because they come together in a place of unity, right, in a place of intimacy, in a place of being open uh, uh, to one another, trusting one another, naked to one another, authentic to one another, they are then able to produce more than the sum of their individual whole, right? The two can then put to flight 10,000. The power of two of two becomes 10,000, not 2,000, right? That's what you get in a synergy, right? That's what you get when you when you come into a relationship in which you both trust one another and you are bringing all of you to the table, right? So, uh, so the greatest gift is a portion of thyself. You know, the greatest thing you can bring to a relationship is yourself, right? It's not the gift that you give, but yourself. What brings about intimacy, what brings about the beauty of relationship is the person that you bring to the table, right? You know, when your relationship, all you're giving is her. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a really, you don't really get the beauty of relationship. 
right? Because you, you're trying to curry favor. You are trying to buy the other person's heart, right? Relationship is not by gifts. It's the heart that is in hold that you give, right? What brings two together? What bonds two to make it one is the giving of selves, 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 giving of selves until you bring yourself who you are, just as you are to that relationship. You cannot have a synergistic relationship. You cannot have what we call the healthy relationship. You cannot have the life-giving relationship, right? In a life-giving relationship, it involves a giving of yourself, not what you have, but yourself, the you. The you is who the person, the other person needs, not the gift that you have to give, you know, and, and we'll talk more about it as we go along, you know, we're human and we come into marriages, we come into relationship with baggages, right? Your, to, your, your marriage, your relationship can only work to the extent to which you have dealt with your baggages because those baggages limit us, limit our ability to bring ourselves to the table, right? You've had broken trust with issues in your life. Now you are seeing your spouse in the light of your other relationship, right? That is going to be a block. It's going to be a mental block, right? Because then you're not able to be naked and not a shame because you are, you, are, you, are, you are thinking that your spouse will be like the other spouse. So you are, you are, you are, you are not bringing the whole of yourself to the table, right? And, and that's going to affect your relationship. That's going to affect your spouse, right? You know, and I'm not saying that it's easy, you know, because we are, as we come to, we have to walk through our baggages, right? But you, you're only going to get what you give. Your, your relationship, your marriage is only going to be as strong and as beautiful as to the extent to which you can be naked and not ashamed. Because what you, what makes your marriage, what makes your relationship is the you that you bring to the table, is the you that you bring to that, to that relationship, that friendship, right? If you bring someone else a mask, you're going to get the result of the mask, not you. Your spouse will relate to the mask, not you. You're going to feel lonely, right? And it will not be the fault of, the, of your spouse. It will be your fault. The, your, 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 your partner can only love the person that comes to the party, the person that comes to the relationship. If you bring yourself, then you're giving your partner the opportunity to love you. If you bring a mask, you're only giving the, your partner the opportunity to love the mask. If all your partner loves is the mask you bring, you will not feel the benefit of that love you will be isolated because it will not get to your heart because the mask is not you, right? Let's go on. You know, from the moment we're born, we begin seeking close connections, right? Because God made us for relationship. God made us for relationship. He did not make any one of us to be alone. You know, even God himself, after making Adam, said it is not good for man to be alone. God knew what he, what he had put in man. And he said, it is not good for man to be alone. And when we talk about man in that, in that, in that sense, don't forget at that point in time, in Adam was both the male and the female energy, male and the female energy, right? So when you word man there is, is unisex, it is not good for a woman to be alone. It is not good for a man to be alone, Right. God has made us for relationship. That relationship does not have to be marriage, right? It's not compulsory to marry. It's not compulsory for everybody to marry, right? But it's compulsory for everybody to relate with someone else, right? We are made for relationship. Nobody was made to be to be a loner. Don't, don't, don't live your life a loner. You will not get the best of life by being a loner. We all, we, all, we all were created to relate with one another, right? Our essence is found in relationship. Our essence is found in relating with one another, right? And, it, and it's not just marriage. Marriage is only one of the relationships in our life, right? We're meant to relate with, 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 our, with our sibling, our parents, our children, our friends, our associates, you know, uh, our society members, whatever. But we need relationships in our life, you know. 
That is what makes life, you know, enjoyable. That's what makes life beautiful. That's what makes life enriching, right? Without relationship, you, 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 it's going to be a wilderness, right? It's going to be a wilderness. You're not going to get a beauty of life. Beauty of life, you know, comes from someone knowing you, someone hearing you, someone seeing you. It comes from you hearing someone. It comes from you seeing somebody. It, it comes from you knowing somebody, right? That's where beauty of life comes from. Beauty, you can't do that yourself, right? Yes, you can do a good, a good part of that yourself. You must love yourself. You must see yourself. You must hear yourself, right? Uh, you must know yourself, right? That's important because if you don't do that for yourself, no other person can do that for you. It's a starting point, but it's not the end point, right? So, from the moment we're born, we we'll begin seeking close relate connections, right? Both physical and emotion to others, because that's just the way we're created. You know, uh, what makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful, right? So <laughs> uh, what makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful. Brené uh, Brown did put that. He says, what makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful. What, what, what The things in your life that make you turn on come out, you know, produce the beauty of who you are. Produce all that God has made you to be. In each one of us, there's beauty. <laughs> you know, nobody was created by God with ugliness on the inside. Yes, life has produced some, produced some ugliness, but in all of us came with beauty. We have strength. Yeah, so we have weaknesses, but we also have strengths. We have things that only almost only we can produce, and the world needs it. The people around us need it, right? So the, the things that are able to then bring that beauty out of you, right? You know, are, are important things in your life, right? And part of that, like we said, is relationship, you know, being able to connect with someone else being able to feel that sense of importance that pen, that sense of being seen being heard being known right and, and and being able to bring your authentic self out you know without being scared of being looked down on you know and, and that's and it's beauty right he, he might come in first of all in in in, in his um uh, his um uh, in, in, in its infant mode, you know, yes, it, some of it might need to be developed. Some of it might need to be matured. Some of it might need to be tweaked, you know, but there's beauty on the inside of you, you know, and, and that beauty comes out in a place where you can turn on, when you can come to the party, where you can be naked and not feel ashamed, you know, and that's what we're all seeking for. We're looking for those relationships where I can, you can be yourself. You can show up. You know, and that's what relationship is all about. Where you can you can be in a, um, a, a, a you can be among what you call your tribe, people you can trust, people you can be yourself with. Yes, there are sometimes you're in places where you can't be yourself. You know, somehow you have to you have to live to some code. You have to protect yourself. Your guides have to be on. You know, but you can only live that for so long, right? You know place where you can be free you can be free you can be free to be yourself be free to talk be free to laugh be free to dance be free to jump you know be free to make noise you know and, and live the life that god has given to you you know and we all need that we all need that that's what called life away from that we're not leaving right